it's Hannah Macri. Welcome back to my channel. So today is going to be a little bit different. Today I'm actually going to be doing a book review. Mm, that novel is The Pause by John Larkin. It's an Australian novel so it's super duper close to my heart. And with that being said, let's get right down to it. Now, just before we start this review, I do have to put a bit of a trigger warning onto this video. This book is recommended for people of 14 years of age or older, as it delves into quite sensitive topics such as depression, anxiety, abuse, and even suicide. If this is something that triggers you, or if you don't want to read about it, it's perfectly fine, you can click off this video. But also, if you're going through some trouble and you can't talk to your friends or family, I'm going to leave some websites in the description below that you can click on and you can have a look. And also, John Larkin has even put some websites and some phone numbers in his book as well. I'm going to put in for the American, the UK. He is an Australian novel, so he has the Australian numbers, but that's okay. I'm going to leave everything below for you. Alrighty, just a quick summary before we get down to the actual review. So Declan is a 17 year old boy who lives in Sydney and at first glance he looks like he has it all. He has a mum, a dad, a sister who love him, he has good friends, he even has a girlfriend. But there's something in Declan's past that just won't go away and everything just builds up. And in one moment he makes a choice. But what if he didn't make that choice? This story delves into two sections, one where he decides to make that choice and one where he pauses before that and the consequences and what happens because of each choice. Alrighty, so if you haven't read this book and you still want to by that summary, I'm going to give you a few seconds to click off, right? Alrighty, let's get down to it. In my opinion, it's a beautifully worded story which closely represents the life of a teenager living in Sydney. I mean, just for example, Declan has two close friends, one named Chris and one named Mate, with five A's. So when John Larkin was writing this story, he also actually went into a high school in Northern Sydney to have a look at the mannerisms, the emotional trauma, everything like that from a boy teenager's perspective, which is perfectly shown throughout this story. So this story is told in first person with a focalization through Declan throughout the whole novel, which really helps us delve into his thoughts and feelings. This is the most connected I've ever felt to a teenage boy. And he's fictional. So this story is actually told in two parts. One where Declan actually decides to kill himself and one where he pauses and thinks about the consequences of his actions. And this is shown throughout all of the chapter titles. So this is called a non-space chapter. This non-space chapter is what would happen if Declan actually decided to kill himself and how he would feel. But in saying that, this story isn't even told in chronological order, which is really amazing because a lot of YA fiction novels are usually told with an introduction, a complication, a resolution and conclusion, but this is completely different. I mean, the first chapter is actually called Five Hours Before, and the second chapter is Seven Months Before. It's amazing and can be a bit confusing to start off with because you don't really understand because you're jumping from time period to time period. But in saying that, after about 50 pages, it was really interesting to sort of jump between all these different times and how Declan was feeling through all of these different times. And it's really amazing to get these non-space chapters in between here to really show how miserable Declan is even after he killed himself. Alrighty. Enough with me ranting and raving about this book. I've actually got a couple of other reviews from other people as well. So as I read them out, they're going to pop up on the screen. Right. So the first one is from Rebecca Green from the Herald Sun. And they say, John Larkin deserves to win awards and much applause for this young adult book that deals with the tough topic of suicide. It made me cry, but it also made me laugh and think. Recommended to all the teenagers and their parents. And the second one is from Louise Richardson from the Daily Examiner. And they said, while dealing with the heavy stuff, Larkin also uses humour, which is sure to appeal to his target audience. At times it felt like the book was pushing its agenda too explicitly, but when the agenda is to make others think about the consequences of suicide, it's an easy one to accept. And then the final one is from Gemma, and she said, in 
And if the first few pages dishearten you, stick around because with the lows comes the highs and with the story and the ending that is definitely worth the journey. This is the perfect book for those who are interested in the genre but are not inclined to spend big money on boxes and boxes of tissues. These three reviews really sum up how I feel about this book as well. John Larkin uses a lot of humour to sort of have that stepping stone towards the more emotional stuff and that really helps. It really helps the plot along knowing that he's just an Australian teenager just like you and I just going through all of the motions of school and pressures of society and everything like that it's all building on him and it's really amazing to see John Larkin use humor to sort of break break it up a little bit there's also quite a few points during the novel where they do talk about suicide um, explicitly and how how it would affect people around them which kind of gives the idea that you're sort of cramming down this idea of consequences down your throat but it really helps out the case of the it's really good to teach in older classrooms like grade 10 11 12 because it has that explicitness and talks about suicide and abuse and really uses humor to break it up which is really good for helping kids understand the consequences of suicide and it's really good as well and to be used in a quiet classroom as well John Larkin has also included reading group questions here as well so it gets the conversation started about whether Declan's suicide could be preventable or you know there's different strategies of working through something do you think he took the right steps and, and there's one really here as well where you could talk about it says do you think that there were any signs of Declan's mental illness do anxiety and depression manifest themselves differently in teenagers versus adults? This is really something you could bring up during a classroom. You can have your kids discuss about all different types of mental illness and how they affect teenagers versus adults. And Declan's story is just like any other Australian teenager. And so I think it should definitely be taught in schools, especially grade 10, 11, 12, because this story could be anyone else. It really talks about suicide, it talks about depression and anxiety and how anyone can go through it, even a kid that should have the perfect life. So it should definitely be taught in schools, absolutely, to see that suicide is not the only option. That there are, that there are consequences to what happens and the people around you are affected by it as well. And really, how things can change with just a pause. Alrighty, so just before I go, I just want to tell you my favourite quote from the novel, and it's, stick around, you're worth it, and I definitely believe that. Alright, that's all from me today, but I want to hear from you. Comment down below if you read the book and give me a short little review, and I'll make sure to have a little look at it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and um, I'll see you guys later.